we have and to then, teach them exactly how to pee. Exactly, it. yeah. Uh, so because they just pee and that's it. <laughs> yeah. So they and then uh, unfortunately you have more work, you know, with all the spray. Yes. But, um, <laughs> Excuse me, can I uh, have my favourite rocking chair? This is not as comfortable. Better? This is this is better. I keep All my right. back straight. You know. <laughs> Shall we begin? Yes. Okay. Hi everyone, welcome back with me in Ask Me Doctor Season 4, a health video series for you and your family. Kids catch lots of bugs in their first few years of life. Colds and other respiratory infections are common as well. But kids can get urinary tract infections, UTIs too. Sometimes the symptoms of this infection can be very hard to spot in kids. It is important to get your child treated because a UTI can turn into a more serious kidney infection. To make us understand better about this topic, I bring you a pediatric surgeon from Pantai Hospital, Kuala Lumpur, who is also a father of one. Please help me welcome Dr. Nada Suhakaran. Hello doctor, how are you today? Thank you for being here. Hi Ariel, thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be with you. Now, let's start with the first question. I would like to get this box and I want you to have a lucky draw in it, okay? <laughs> Your first question is, what is urinary tract infection? Urinary tract infection is uh, basically uh, what happens uh, when there's bacteria in the urine system. Bas anything from the um, kidneys down to the bladder. Anytime when you have bacteria in the urine within the system, uh, that's considered a urinary tract infection. All right, shall we draw our next question? Great. How does my child get UTI? Bacteria that uh, usually cause infection mm -hmm. uh, is derived from anything outside. Mm -hmm. the body that enters through the water pipe, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's a boy or a girl. Oh. It's more common in girls because in the urinary tract, the external part mm -hmm. from outside to the bladder is shorter in girls oh. compared to a boy. So girls are more predisposed to getting urinary tract infection compared to boys. So the source of the infection is usually in the groin area. Oh. So the nappy area or the underpants area. So they should always change their diapers? Yes, so basically if you've got a dirty nappy, you want to change it early. Mm -hmm. You don't want to leave it festering for hours. Uh. So the more you fester, then you've got more chance of uh, bacteria entering uh, the uh, water pipe. I see. So the source of urinary tract infection, the bacteria is predominantly from the feces. So a lot of urinary tract infection is usually due to something called E. coli, which is a common bacteria in the gut. Mm -mm. Whether you, you wash the groin area 100 times a day or once a day, there's still bacteria lingering around the underpan area. Mm -mm. So that bacteria can enter, enter the uh, water pipe. Of course, if you keep it clean, you've got less amount of bacteria that's around the area mm -mm. and that's less chance of uh, getting urinary tract infection. So washing your child regularly and also keeping the groin area clean. Um, in, in the boys, just washing the penis, just attracting the penis to the foreskin gently and having running water down the foreskin. Warm water? Yeah, just, just warm water and you're showering mm -hmm. in the bath. Just pull the foreskin back okay. gently and then uh, just, just rinse with your finger. Oh. And that will allow uh, to reduce the bacterial load in the area that can potentially go up the water pipe into the bladder. All right, let's jump to our next question. Yeah. Thank you. What are the signs and symptoms of UTI? I have a daughter, so how do I know that my daughter has UTI? How do I recognize the signs and symptoms? The commonest uh, symptoms would be uh, fever, if it's quite severe. A high fever? Um, it can be variable. So anything, anytime there's a urinary, a urinary tract infection, you may not have fever. Maybe a later sign, but the earlier sign may be tummy pain, maybe burning sensation when they pass urine. Mm -hmm. Very rarely you can get some uh, discolored urine or maybe cloudy urine. Oh, so you don't often see those urine. Stuff. Not always, but sometimes you can see it. So cloudy or strong smelling urine. Or oh, very rarely you can get blood as well. Oh. So th those are more kind of uh, more irritated bladder that can cause uh, 
bleeding. How is about peeing very often? Yes, frequency of urine is also possible. Yeah, so anything that irritates the bladder, makes you want to pee regular, uh, more frequently, mm -hmm. makes you uh, have pain, makes you have uh, have uh, symptoms of the the lower feeling. part of your uh -huh. tummy, uh, and also when you get a more when when the infection is moved on to your bloodstream or become more serious, mm -hmm. you can get fever, a systemic response. So fever may be a later sign. Wow, those are very good. Answers now. We're going to get another question. Yeah. Yep. Yep. What kind of treatment and medication would my child need if she gets UTI? What we want to know is whether it's a true UTI. So for a doctor in, in the tertiary centres or in hospitals, what, what, what I like to know is, is this a urinary tract infection mm -hmm. or is it an external irritation? So in a boys, it can be an inflammation of the foreskin. Mm -hmm. So they may have symptoms of not wanting to pass urine, burning sensation, all that because the, the tip is, is sore. Mm -hmm. uh, similarly with a girl, they have, might have some irritation to the, the, the external area, uh, external genitalia that might make them feel sensitive to pass urine. So to diagnose a true urinary tract infection, you need a urine, urine sample. Urine so sample. You, uh, best one would be a midstream urine. So when they're passing urine, the middle of that stream, you catch a sample and then we need to analyze it. How about for babies that they can't, you know? The same thing. So we will we'll often, when they come to the hospital, we get them to parents to undress the them uh -huh. and then uh, hold a pot ready to catch urine as they're oh. peeing. And get a u good urine sample. Okay. So, so that we know for sure that this is a urinary tract infection. Mm -mm. So then we know what kind of bacteria is causing this and also treat specifically for that bacteria. We don't always like to assume that it's a urinary tract infection. So once it's a confirmed urinary tract infection, of course, we need antibiotics. Some of them are not ill enough to require hospitalization. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the, they being unwell with the fever and so on, they have poor appetite, poor intake of fluid, uh, which is essential to clear out the system as well. Mm -hmm. So if you're not taking enough fluid, then we need to probably admit them to the hospital, give them some fluid through mm -hmm. intravenous line, and then give some intravenous antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Most children will be able to uh, be treated uh, as an outpatient with lots of fluid orally and also um, some antibiotics orally. So antibiotics, lots of water mm. and other than that, soak in hot That's right, soft so water. just if they are having difficulties passing urine or discomfort passing urine, just mm -hmm. soak, just have them sit in the, in the bath, bath with hot wa uh, water basin with, salt. with uh, some warm water and a mm -hmm. handful of salt, mm -hmm. just dissolve in that and then get them to sit for 10 minutes, they'll be able to pass urine easily. But once we confirm there's a urinary tract infection, the first episode of urinary tract infection in all children under 5 mm -hmm. is uh, ideal or actually essential for me to confirm there is no other issues with the urinary tract system. Mm -hmm. So I'm talking more about the kidneys, kidney to the bladder and the bladder itself. Mm -hmm. So sometimes children who present very early under five years of age with urinary tract infection, we want to know there is no other abnormality, there's no something, something called reflux of urine from uh, the bladder up to the kidney. Uh -huh. Exactly. So identifying them early uh, would mean that we will be able to treat and prevent uh, significant kidney infection? kidney infection and damage. So we want to preserve the function of the kidney. One of the key uh, features of these children who have urinary tract infection and, and identifying a uh, abnormality in the what we call the upper tract, upper mm -hmm. tract is a kidney to the bladder, mm -hmm. uh, is to do an ultrasound scan so okay. that we can deal with the preventative potential kidney damage. Okay, it's good. Just an easy ultrasound. Yeah, just an ultrasound scan. All right, let's begin with our next one, and let me shake it for you. Yeah. Okay, let's see what is this interesting question. Now, how can I prevent my child from getting UTI? I have four kids, and two of them are girls. And of course, as a mother, I'm very concerned about my girls getting UTI. So, how can I know for sure, or how can I prevent them from getting UTIs? Food and diet, uh, for food and fluid intake is essential. Mm -hmm. So for pre preventative uh, measures, uh, what you need to do is making sure that bowel function is okay and the urine function is okay. A lot of kids don't like to drink too much water. Totally agree with you. And they don't <laughs> want to take too much fiber. So fruits and vegetables is essential. Mm -hmm. So you got good bowel function, you don't grow too much bacteria. 
Also, it's advisable to take some probiotics or some sort of um, food supplements such as yogurt or even probiotics as itself. You know, right. you can get some They'll probiotics for kids. Mm -hmm. um, that will help with the population of bacteria within the gut. Okay. So, if you've got good bacteria in your gut, you got less of a, of a bacteria that causes infection. Okay, so that means that we need to eat lots of vegetables and fruits and also drink lots of water mm. and probiotics. How about if she goes to the toilet, I have to teach her to clean from top to bottom? Yes, that's right. Uh, so you, uh, is it better with water or tissue or...? I think generally just uh, just rinsing mm -hmm. is uh, good. So basically... Do I use soap? Uh, in the genital area, it can be quite sensitive. Mm -hmm. So using soap may not be, it may not be not necessary. Advisable. Just just uh, douse it with water. Warm mm -hmm. water is fine, mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, dry with tissue. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Mm -hmm. So even the boys, I, I, I when I when they come to my clinic, I teach them how to retract the foreskin if they have foreskin. Uh, we have and to teach them exactly how to clean exactly, it. Exactly. Yeah. Uh -huh. So because they just pee and that's it. <laughs> yeah. So they and then uh, unfortunately you have more work. to you know, with all the spray. Yes. <laughs> but um, pulling the foreskin gently back to mm -hmm. teach them when they, they are able to do that. Mm -hmm. And then pass urine and then get you tissue paper to, to dab dry it. Oh. And they got foreskin, return the foreskin back to normal position. I see. And that will also reduce the irritation of the urine onto the, under the foreskin and also reduce the amount of bacteria that's growing there. How about um, uh, going for bath or shower? It doesn't affect anything? Like yeah, so when you're in the sh shower bath, you know, just remember to douse the area, the gentle areas, and then mm -hmm. wash the, 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 the underpants area so mm -hmm. you reduce the amount of bacteria in the area. Mm -hmm. um, don't have to, you know, the boys, are, you don't wash, uh, don't use soap on the head of the penis oh, because it's okay. quite sensitive. Let's go for our next question. I think this might be the last one. All right, now the last one is. Is it true that uncircumcised boys younger than the age of one has a slightly higher chance of risk to UTIs? Yeah, boys generally don't get urinary tract infection unless there's a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I don't see that in my practice that the boys who are under one uh, uncircumcised have got a higher incidence of urinary tract infection. So um, the, there are also pros and cons of doing early circumcision. Uh, I'm an advocate of waiting for boys to be about 10 years plus before they circumcise themselves mm. um, and uh, there is no evidence showing that boys, un uncircumcised boys under one year of age have got a higher risk of infection. I see. Generally as parents, uh, you, when you're washing your child, also just hold the pore, you know, penis or how much you can retract the foreskin, retract mm -hmm. as much as you can gently and then with your one other finger just uh, with the water, water just just rinse the area that will reduce the bacterial load there's no no more difference uh, in a circumcised or uncircumcised boys unless they have a upper tract abnormality so as i said to you if they had a urinary tract infection mm -hmm. there must be something going on with the upper tract mainly the system between the kidney to the bladder so if you a child, especially a boy who has had a proven urinary tract infection by a urine test, then you need to have an ultrasound scan. Then we need to find out why he's had a urinary tract infection, not just because they are uncircumcised. Okay, before we end, would you like to add any tips or advice to the parents out there? Feed your child well. <laughs> uh, it's essential to give them high fiber diet with lots of water. Water is cheap and cheerful. It flushes the system, both the unit track as well as the uh, poop pipe. Alright, thank you Dr. Nada for your time and for sharing with us your knowledge. I hope that you have enjoyed our program today. For more informative and health related videos for you and your family, stay tuned on Ask Me Doctor. Thank you for watching our videos. Till the next time, I'm Ariel. I'm Dr. Nada Sadakaran. And this is motherhood.com.my. Bye! Bye!